It's almost impossible to pick up a daily paper without reading about a person who has achieved some unusual accomplishment. And almost invariably, these stories include the overcoming of what at one time appeared to be virtually insurmountable handicaps. A boy whose legs were terribly burned and who seemed destined to a life as a cripple becomes one of the world's outstanding track stars. A poor boy amasses a fortune. A woman, blind and deaf from birth, becomes one of the most inspirational personalities of all time. Every day, a new and dramatic story appears somewhere. Obstacles overcome. Outstanding success achieved. They're too numerous to mention. But how and why? These persons do far more than the unhandicapped to overcome obstacles that seem insurmountable and achieve the success they seek. Why? The answer, if fully understood, will bring you and me anything we really want. And it's deceptively simple. These people have goals. That is, they fix in their minds a point they have to reach, something that's more important than the effort and time that have to be expended in its achievement. A dream seen only in the mind and felt in the heart that's too big to be denied. A dream which rises before their eyes when they awaken in the morning and is the last thing they think about as they drop off to sleep at night. This dream, invisible to all the world except to the person who holds it, is responsible for perhaps every great advance of man, it's the prime cause of much of what we see in the world around us. Everything worthwhile achieved by man is a dream come true, a goal reached. It has been said, what the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. It's the skyscraper, the bridge spanning the bay, landing on the moon. And it's the little corner business establishment. It's the lovely home in the suburbs. It's a youngster getting a diploma and the new baby in its mother's arms. It's a low golf handicap and a business position reached. What the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Do you know what this means to you and me? Well, let me try to explain, and I might add, it took me many years to find this out for myself. Once it's understood, however, life becomes easier, more fun, far more exciting, and incalculably more rewarding. To begin, to understand this subject of goals, we have to realize that it's the very basis of any success. It is, in fact, the very definition of success. The best definition of success I've ever been able to find goes like this. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy goal. If you think about it a moment, you'll realize just how good that definition is. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy goal. It means that any person regularly engaged in achieving something which he considers worthy of him is successful. At the same time, it also means that any person not so engaged must be defined as not successful, a failure at least temporarily. Any person with a dream in his mind and heart which he is pursuing as a worthy goal is successful. The uninformed always seem to equate success with lots of money. While money often accompanies success, it has nothing to do with success necessarily unless it happens to be a part of the goal. It's left to each of us to decide for himself what his goal is. With such a simple definition of success, you'd think everyone would be successful. Everyone should be, everyone can be. But it's estimated that only about 5% are. Of all the people you pass on the street, only about 5 out of 100 can tell you what they're working toward. The rest are just drifting along hoping something good will happen to them, or at least that nothing too bad will, letting circumstances and economic winds blow them this way and that. I like to compare human beings with ships, as Carlyle used to do. It's estimated that about 95% can be compared to ships without rudders, subject to every shift of wind and tide, they're helplessly adrift. And while they fondly hope that they'll one day drift into a rich and successful port, you and I know that for every narrow harbor entrance, there are a thousand miles of rocky coastline. The chances against their drifting into port are a thousand to one. But the five percent who have taken the time and exercised the discipline to decide on a destination and to chart a course, sail straight and far across the deep oceans of life, reaching one port after another and accomplishing more in just a few years than the rest accomplish in a lifetime. If you should visit a ship and ask the captain his next port of call, he'll answer you in one sentence. Even though the captain of a ship cannot see his destination for fully 99% of his journey, he knows what it is, where it is, and that barring an unforeseen and highly unlikely catastrophe, he'll reach it if he keeps doing certain things a certain way every day. Every person should do the same thing. 
And as you can say in one concise sentence what your goal is, the chances are good that you've never clearly defined your goal. When you ask most people what it is they seek, they'll answer in vague, general, non-specific terms. They'll say happiness or health or money. These are not goals. They're simply general conditions desired by everyone. When we talk of goals, let's be specific. What is it you want, you as a person? What is it you would like very much to have or to be or to do, even though you may feel it's for one reason or another somewhat beyond your reach at the present time? You see, if you can tell me what you want, I can tell you how to get it, as long as it's worthy of you. Proceeding successfully through a lifetime should be a matter of progressively setting and achieving goals one after another, each a little better and perhaps more interesting than the preceding. Just as a ship can sail to only one port at a time, set your first port of call. When you reach it, and reach it you will, you can set a new goal, and then another. By following this meaningful and common sense approach to life, you'll be successful and can accomplish more in five years than the great majority of people do in a lifetime. Now let me tell you of a way to clarify your thinking and establish your first goal if you don't already have one. Knowing that without a goal we're unsuccessful, but that with a goal we will have direction and purpose and that our goal will be reached, we begin to realize that establishing a clearly defined goal is one of the most important steps we can possibly take. If you do not know what it is you want more than anything else, in other words, if you're not one of the fortunate who knows exactly what it is he or she seeks, set some time aside right now. Spend an hour or so, or many hours, even days if necessary, writing down the things you would most like to have. Make a want list. This could include a more beautiful home, a new car, a wanted child, a certain amount of money, a better job, better grades, a particular position in your school or organization, any one of a hundred things. Write down as many as you can think of. If you're married, it's a good idea to do this with your spouse. When you've written down all the things you want, all of them, choose one. Only one that you want more than all the others. Write this on a separate sheet or draw a circle around it. Now put the sheet away and forget about all the ideas except the one you've decided to accomplish first. Like a ship, a person can reach only one port at a time. Most of the confusion and indecision suffered by the majority of people is caused by their half-heartedly wanting so many things that they can't decide which to go after first. As a result, they run in circles and often accomplish little or nothing at all. Remember, as a rule, you can achieve only one goal at a time. Once you've decided upon the one goal you first intend to reach, write it out on a card to carry with you. Think about it the first thing in the morning and the last thing at night. Think about it as often during the day as you can. By doing this, you'll be forcing your goal into your subconscious mind, from which will come the answers as you need them for its accomplishment. This is the process used by the world's successful men and women. Think about your goal as often as you can. Get a mental image of it as having already been accomplished. But be sure to be absolutely specific. Don't generalize. If your goal is a certain amount of money, write down the exact amount and the time limit for earning it. If your goal is a beautiful home, get a picture of the exact home, even if you have to pay an architect to draw the plans for you. You might as well, because you will achieve it. But be very careful on what you set your mind and heart, for if you want it strongly enough, you'll get it. I spent more than 16 years looking for the so-called secret of success. I wanted to know what element or elements separate the haves from the have-nots, not just in a financial sense, although that's certainly an important part of living, but in every sense. I started looking for the answer in 1933 during the Depression, and I didn't find it until New Year's Day, 1950. All of a sudden I realized that in the hundreds of lives I'd studied, in the countless books I'd read, a plain and simple fact had been staring me in the face all along. And it is simply that we become what we think about. You see, you are at this moment nothing more than the sum total of your thoughts to this point. Similarly, you'll be next year, five years from now, and so on, what you think about from this point onward. That's why establishing a goal is vital to success. Unless we're thinking about the thing we wish to accomplish, our thinking is erratic, confused, jumping first from one thing to another, with the result that we accomplish nothing, arrive nowhere, travel in circles. By thinking every morning, every night, and as many times during the day as we can about the single goal we've established for ourselves, we actually begin moving toward it and bringing it toward us. When we concentrate our thinking, it's like taking a river that's twisting and turning and meandering all over the countryside and putting it into a straight, smooth channel. Now it has power, direction, economy, speed. 
It's the same with our minds. Once we know where we're going, we know why we get out of bed in the morning. We know why we're working and why it's important to do the very best work of which we're capable. We know why it's vital that we cut ourselves away from the big sluggish river of people who are drifting without purpose and cut the channel straight and clear to the number one dream in our heart. Some evening, during the rush hour, stand at a busy street corner and watch the passing crowd. Observe how they walk, look at their faces. Do they seem interested, happy, purposeful, interesting? Or do they seem, for the most part, dull, uninterested, bored? If you watch long enough, you'll see a person with a quick and purposeful step, a good carriage and posture, with interesting, intelligent eyes, who walks as though he knows where he's going and who's going to insist on getting there. He's a man with a goal, a dream in his mind and heart. Several billion human beings on Earth would give anything they have for the freedom and personal liberty you and I take for granted. To have the right to choose their work and their goals, to enjoy our bountiful standard of living, to know the peace and privacy of our homes, and to have laws which protect a citizen rather than persecute him. We have it all, and yet in the midst of our plenty, millions lead unhappy, aimless lives, living from day to day, month to month, confused, dispirited, in a prison of their own manufacture. These are the people who have never made the decision that could set them free. They've not decided what to do with their lives, even in our climate of freedom. As Carlyle said, the man without a purpose is like a ship without a rudder, have a purpose in life, and having it, throw such strength of mind and muscle into your work as God has given you. He also wrote, A man with a half volition goes backward and forward, and makes no way on the smoothest road. A man with a whole volition advances on the roughest, and will reach his purpose, if there be even a little wisdom in it. And Munger said, There is no road to success but through a clear, strong purpose. Nothing can take its place. A purpose underlies character, culture, position, attainment of every sort. So decide on your goal. Insist upon it. Look at your goal card every morning, every night, and as many times during the day as you can. Force your goal into your subconscious mind. See yourself as having attained it. Do this without fail every day, and it will become a habit. A habit that will lead you from one success to another all the days of your life. For this is the secret of success, the door to everything you will ever have or be. You are now, and you will become...